Hello and welcome to the Geoscience Bubble, a section of the GeoRGB channel where I will provide you with professional advice. If you have any question that is related to geology, hydrogeology, or geographic information systems, feel free to send me an email to marcel.8 at geoscourse.online. From those emails, I will select the most interesting ones that I believe I can help, and I will create a video tutorial with an original solution. The goal of this section is to be closer to the GeoRGV community and also, at the same time, invite the members of this community to be active and participate with their own ideas and solutions. You can use the comment section below to post your impressions, your thoughts, in order to help other members of this community. Your knowledge, your experience, count for us. And remember this slogan, the unity made the strength. Today we are going to see how to calculate approximately. This word here is very important because it's going to be just an approximation the hydraulic conductivity of a sealed soil after finishing at the speed. Let me introduce a little bit the situation. The other day I got an email from a member of the GeoRGV community and he was asking me if he can calculate the hydraulic conductivity of at the speed after finishing the excavation. He was working at the field and he made several uh, test speed in a big extension and he identified groundwater in all of them, indicating the presence of an aquifer. Then he decided to measure the groundwater recovery in some of the test speed. So the data that we have to calculate the hydraulic conductivity is going to be the dimension of the test pit, we are going to have the, the area of the surface and also we are going to have the depth of the test pit, also the volume of the groundwater inside of the test pit uh, after the level of water is stabilized and also we have uh, some measurements related with the, the recovery of the groundwater inside the test pit. It is important to mention that to calculate the hydraulic conductivity in a test speed, it's not the ideal scenario. It is, I'm going to say that it is pretty weird and it is not common, right? But the thing is that we have to add that to the limitations that we can find when we are working at the field. And in this case, it was not expected to identify groundwater, but if you find groundwater and you want to, to get a quantitative value of the hydraulic conductivity, you can make this kind of measurements to have some information. But we have to be aware that it is going to be some limitations with the calculations because the equations to calculate the hydraulic conductivity was not designed to calculate the hydraulic conductivity in a test pit. It was designed to calculate the hydraulic conductivity in a groundwater well where we have a pipe and we know what is the height of the screen part of the pipe. We know also what is the height of the solid part of the pipe. We know what is the diameter of the drill. We know also the characteristics of the filter that used to be sun. Also, we know the characteristics of the silt that used to be bentonite. And with this kind of device, the groundwater can flow inside the uh, groundwater well. And we can introduce a sensor inside the well and measure the, the recovery with a with a probe, right, with a sensor, and we can measure that recovery with a really high precision. But in this case, we don't have a well, and the only thing we have is a, a test pit and the measurements related with the test pit and also the recovery inside the test pit. And with that data, we are going to try to do the best and get a quantitative value of the hydraulic conductivity. 
that value is going to be better than provide to a qualitative value, right? We can say, okay, we have seal and the range of the hydraulic conductivity in these dimensions is from here to here. That is going to be a qualitative value. But if we can provide a quantitative, that is going to be better. And that's what we are going to do in this video. In order to have a better understanding between the geology, the groundwater, and the test pit, I created a block diagram in 3D. And I am going to talk about the, this uh, diagram now. Then what we have at the side is a layer of silt and also a layer of sand. Then after finishing the test pit, we are going to have something like that, where most of the part of the test pit is covered by the silt layer. And at the bottom, we have the, the sand layer. As you know, our site is saturated with groundwater. Then we are going to have something like that. Then after the excavation, what is going to happen is something like that. It is going to have a depression on the water table known as a cone of depression. Also, the area of the test pit where we have the layer of sand is going to be full with uh, groundwater almost right away because the permeability of the sun, the hydraulic conductivity of the sun is uh, too much, much bigger than the hydraulic conductivity of the seal layer. That one is going to be the hydraulic conductivity for the sun. This one is going to be the hydraulic conductivity for the seal. And what happened is this one from the sun is much, much higher than the hydraulic conductivity from the sealed layer. Then here at the sun, the groundwater is going to run very fast to fill the, the space that we have in the in the test pit after after removing the soils from the excavation. But here at the silt uh, layer, the water is going to run very uh, slow and is not going to cover this this part of the of the test pit with groundwater. It's going to take uh, more time. It's going to take. Then the situation is then is the next. We start to do the excavation with the excavator and we started to 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 take out the the soil from the from the test pit as we are taking the soil from the test pit when we reach the layer of sand the hole is going to be filled with groundwater almost right away at the sand layer but for the layer of uh, silt is not going to happen the recovery is going to be much much uh, slower and that is a really important thing that we are going to have in consideration then to have a better idea what happened i created this diagram here where in time equal to zero it indicates that we started to measure from here this is the layer of sun we cannot take any measurement on on the sun layer related with the uh, uh, groundwater recovery because as i said that is very very fast and we cannot do that one manually we need a kind of uh, sensor to 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 measure the recovery in a sun because it took maybe seconds and it is very hard to do manually right or maybe impossible but for the layer of seal we can measure that one manually and that uh, diagram try to represent what is going to happen in uh, time equal to zero the groundwater it's located here and this is the distance from the the started point to the stabilized level here is the stabilized level and this is is the goal for our recovery measurements then in time equal to one it recovers a little bit of groundwater at the at the area of the seal. Remember that we have here sun 
and here from here we have seal and now a time equal to one that could be five minutes ten minutes one hour two hours it could be any time right it recovers this amount of water inside of the test pit and also the coin of depression changed a little bit and now is more soft then in time equal to two we recover uh, a bigger amount of groundwater inside the test pit and also the the kind of depression now is smaller then in time equal to three as you can see the groundwater inside of the test pit is equal to the groundwater table at the geological formation it means that the the water inside of the test pit has recovered 100 percent we have the same level at the formation and also at the test pit and this is is the the goal of the measurements right to reach the stabilization of the groundwater inside of the test pit now with all this information we are ready to calculate the hydraulic conductivity to do that one i am going to use a software is this software AcuTestSolve and you can download a free demo version when you click on this link over here you are going to get this tab then just fill this information and they are going to provide you a link to download the software I did already and I have the application over here then here I explain what is the limitations of using the demo version then okay we are going to go to file i'm going to close this one new and we are going to do a slack test why a slack test one of the most important assumptions when we are doing a slack test is that we remove the water from the aquifer suddenly okay then in this case as we are doing the excavation when we take the the soils that they are totally saturated in water it's like we are removing water from the aquifer however at the layer of sun as i said already many times we cannot measure the recovery right we take the water and the water comes to the hole almost right away but at the sealed layer the water runs very 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 slow and even after finishing the excavation the volume of water recovering from the sealed layer is going to be very 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 small then we can assume that we are taking uh, the water from the hole right away it is uh, almost instantly and that's one of the most important assumptions when we are doing an slack test then we can go here again press next this is the units that we are going to use for our project for the distance we are going to use meters for the time we are going to use minutes and um, for the hydraulic conductivity we can use centimeters by second to calculate the hydraulic conductivity in that way with this kind of units we can calculate we can compare the results we get with this table that it's in centimeters uh, per second then let's go to move on here is the information related with the project the name of the world the name of the client and edc i'm not going to put anything here and here is the information related to the to the aquifer the well and let's see how we can fill this information i created a another block diagram to fill this information okay this is a section of the test pit as we know we started to, to measure at the layer of sun because the water recovers very fast and this is the measurements we have from the ground to the groundwater over here this one over here is the static level of uh, groundwater that is our goal for the measurements and this one it's known as displacement then 
we are assuming that we remove this amount of water from here to here. How we know this one? We are going to know this one, what is this distance, after uh, the measurements of the recovery, indicating uh, the same uh, measurement for two or three consecutive uh, measurements. Then when we have the same value, for example, you measure in time equal to, I don't know, 11 o'clock, and you have one measurement, and then you measure at 12 o'clock and you get the same measurement. That indicates the uh, level of groundwater is stabilized. Then we are going to know this distance af after the stabilized level. I know maybe it's a little bit confusing, but at the end, everything is going to make sense, okay? Then I'm going to repeat again, right? This one is the distance from the surface to the bottom, to the top of the layer of sun. This one is the distance from the surface to the stabilized uh, groundwater, okay? When it recovers 100%. And this one is the volume of water, the column of water that we remove from, from, the, from the test pit, okay? At the beginning, we don't know what is this, this volume of water, right? Because we are uh, making the excavation and we are taking soils that are saturated in water, but we don't know exactly what is this volume of water, right? We are going to know that one at the end when we finish the test. Then with this information, we can fill some fields over here. The first one is uh, this one, and this parameter indicates the observed initial displacement, okay? Change in water level from the static. Then that one is this one, 0 0.223, okay, is that distance. This is, is the displacement. Then I'm going to add this information here, 0 0.223, okay. The second one, as you can see, is from the, the bottom of the well to the static uh, water level, okay? And asking a static water colon a height. Then in our case, that one is going to be equal to the displacement, okay? We are going to assume that we are going to calculate the hydraulic conductivity of the silt unit, okay? Then let me make this one thicker, okay? We are going to calculate just for this unit and we are not going to calculate anything related with the sun layer. Then we are going to assume that our aquifer is this one. And this, this one is going to be the bottom of our aquifer, okay? That is my, my interpretation, okay? Everyone can make a different interpretation. And there is no just a unique uh, truth, okay? There are different ways to do this, these things and that's the way I'm going to think, okay? Then I'm going to assume that this one is the bottom of my aquifer for this layer, okay? Then the column of water I have is this one from here to here, okay? It's like if I have, I put a, here a, a well as an example, okay? To have a better understanding of what I'm saying. It's like we have this well here and we have the water, let me change the color. I have the water, this is the stabilized level, and this one is the bottom of the wall. Then the, the column of the water I have inside the wall is this column, okay? And the, and the water that I'm going to extract from this well is all the column, okay? That's the information I'm going to add here. Then this one is going to be the same value as this one, 0.223. Now, next, and here is asking me saturated thickness of the aquifer, okay? That's from the static water level to the uh, bottom of the aquifer, right? As I said previously, we are going to assume that our bottom is this one. Then again, we have the same distance, okay? 0.223. And I'm going to add that value there. 
0.223 and in order to avoid to have negative values on the hydraulic conductivity this distance has to be a little bit bigger than this distance then i'm going to add just one here to be a little bit more bigger then this one is the relation between the hydraulic conductivity in the vertical and the horizontal and I am going to, to assume that the relation is equal to 1. Next, and here uh, we have two different parameters, D and L. D is the distance from the static water table to the top of the screen. Okay, it's for the solid, solid uh, pipe. Then in our case, as the groundwater is at the screen part of the well, as you can see here, the static water table is at the screen part of the well. We don't have any uh, solid pipe that is under the, the groundwater table. Then that distance is going to be zero. The situation is different, for example, if we have the, instead to have the, the static water level over here, for example, is here, right? then we are going to have this distance for the solid pipe right but in our case we don't have any distance because everything of the column of water is at the screen part then that value is going to be zero then the second value the parameter l is for the screen length of the wall screen okay in our case is going to be this value okay the the screen part of the wall is this from the top of the wall to here and in the unit is this one and we are going to consider that everything is a screen right because we can get water from any point over here right there is nothing solid the avoid the water move from here to here then the screen in this one is going to be from here to here and it's going to be 0 0.223 that's the value we are going to add here, 0 0.223. Then next, and here it's asking for different uh, radius, and we have to do some modifications, right? Here we are going to add a value here. This value is related with the radius of the well casing, that's the pipe. This one is we are going to introduce any sensor inside the well. That one is going to be zero because we are not going to introduce anything. anything. Then this one is if we have any packer. We don't have any packer. We are going to leave that one as a zero. Also, this one is the the radius of the well, the 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 drill, right? and outer radius of wall skin also we are not going to add any value here that one is going to be just one but we have to fill this this one and this one and to make an explanation about how we can calculate the radius i have an also a different uh, diagram is this one here the information the some the software wants is to know what is the area of the walls of the well that is in contact with the aquifer okay then let's go to suppose the uh, the the water table the stabilized water table is over here right then here we have the base of the cylinder that has a surface and then also we have a high over here that is this high and then the software what was to know is all this area Okay, this area is the walls of the well that is in contact with the aquifer and we can get water from this area. Then this area depends on the surface of this circle and the height. Then the relation, the area of the circle is this one, right? And then when we have this information, the area and the high we can calculate the volume then to pass our scenario is this one right we have the water table here for example it's over here and it happens the same right 
the software wants to know this area that is the walls of the of the test pit then we have to pass from this situation to this situation then what we are going to do we know the surface of a square is side by side and the, the area for a rectangle is also side by side then we have that the area for a square or for a rectangle is side by side then we can assume that this one it's an area and that area is going to be equal to the area of a circle okay then it's going to be p number p multiplied by the radius square then we know this value because we know the the dimensions of the test pit we know the number p and the only thing we don't know is the the radius right then the radius is going to be equal to side by side divided by the number p and root square that is going to be a equivalence between this one and this one and then we are going to get the radius that we need and the height is relative with the the static level of the water table and that's what I did to calculate the radius. Now I'm going to show you in a spreadsheet. I'm using a Apache and uh, Open Office. This is a a free and open source software. It's like an spreadsheet from the office, right? And don't pay attention to this one. That is not good. That is the time, but it's not good. I'm going to remove this one. And here we have the dimensions of the trench is the length is one meter and the width is 125. And then in order to calculate the area, I multiply by by side. Then I get, sorry, I'm going to remove this one. Okay. And I multiply that one to get the area in meters square. And that one is in meters, that one is in meters. And then I calculated the radio with the next equation. As you can see, is this value divided by P and is the root square. Then the equivalence uh, radius for my uh, area is this one. And that's the number I'm going to place, okay? That is uh, 0 0.63. Then I go here and it's going to be for both for the pipe and for the drill is going to be the same radius 0 0.63 0 0.63 0 0.63. You cannot leave here zero because it's going to the software is going to say that is something is wrong. OK. It forced to add some numbers here, okay? 1.63. I know we don't have any pipe inside the wall, right? But the software needs to have that information. Then I'm going to add both of them. And here you have to leave one, okay? Then uh, next. And here is you want to do any correction. That is related uh, with a correction with a uh, walls of a small diameter. It's not our case. We have a, a big diameter in our wall, in our excavation. Then I'm going to remove this one. And this one is to, if you want to add a correction related with the filter that you add in the, in the groundwater well. We don't have any filter of sand, then we are not going to do any correction. Then we are going to move on to the next one. And now we have to add the data related with the measurements of the recovery. Then let's go to the spreadsheet and I have all the measurements here. This one is the number of the measurement. This one is the, the time. Okay, for time equal to zero, then after five minutes, then after 10 minutes from zero, then after 15 minutes from zero. It means, for example, that, that the time that passed from here to here, okay, you don't have to plus the numbers, okay? This one, it's not after 15 minutes. This one, it's from zero, right? This is after 10, 
this one is after 15 okay don't don't plus the numbers here okay don't make 5 plus uh, 10 it means that it's a uh, 15 minutes later no that is not how it works okay this one is zero then from zero to five from zero to ten from zero to fifteen and 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 go on okay this one is the left to water table okay that is the distance we measure here let me show you okay at time equal to zero that is the distance 1.548 uh, and it's this one, right? 1.548. That's the the distance we measure with the probe, right? When the groundwater is recovering inside the test pit. This one is the head. This one at the beginning is this value. This one is the the first displacement. Is this one? And is this value over here? Okay. And then we have to make the difference, okay? As you can see here, the question, I made this value less the difference of these two, okay? And so on, for example, for this one, as you can see, is the difference is this one less the difference of these two, okay? And this one is a normalized value. As you can see at the beginning, as we didn't recover anything, we have the 100% of the, of the water. But for the next measurement, as you can see, is the is this difference, right? It's divided the head by the initial displacement. And that is all the values I have here, the static level. The static level, as we saw previously, is this value over here, is our goal, is where we want to, to, to get the, the water table, right? Is this value over here. That is this one, and we know about the radius, and that's all the information that we have here. The radius here is in, in meters. And all these measurements are also in meters. Uh, the time is in minutes. Minutes. And uh, this one is in meters. And this one is a dimensional. This one is minutes. And uh, for to do the graph the software is asking for the head okay then i place this value here and this value here and are the same this one and this one and what i'm going to do now is copy all these ones copy and i'm going to paste here yeah press paste and that's it and then we have the values here then i'm going to remove this one because there is no values in number one remove the late okay and that's it i started at the measurement one at the time equal to zero and that's the displacement we have okay then next finish and the software said that everything is okay there is no errors then we can see the information then go to view displacement time and make this one bigger as you can see the time the axis is uh, logarithmic, but not the y axis, okay? Then we can change that one. We are going to change later. But other important thing is uh, at the beginning, the recovery is very uh, slow, right? At the first minutes. And then as the time is increasing, we have a bigger recovery. And as you can see here, there is zero. And there are several values over here that indicates that the the level of groundwater was stabilized. We can see that one on the graph, on the spreadsheet, I mean. As you can see, we have zero, zero here. And when we are measuring the water table, what we saw here is that these two measurements are the same, and the difference is 100 minutes, okay? It indicates that the water table was stabilized. And that's very important because we didn't have any information about what was the the static water table, right? When we made, when we started the excavation, we don't have that information. That's the inconvenient of doing this kind of test in an excavation because we don't know what is the uh, stabilized level of the groundwater, and we need a recovery of at least eighty percent of the water inside the well to have a valid result of this kind of uh, test. 
but as we don't know when it's going to be the 80% because we don't know what is the static level, we have to, to, to do the recovery until the stabilization of the groundwater table. Then let's go to move on again to here and let's go to make some change here. Let's go to put that one as a logarithmic also. Then go here and press this option here and now we have both uh, logarithmic but we don't have the values for for zero okay then also we can add here the solution then go here uh, match solution then they activate this box and here we can select the solution we want we are working in an unconfined aquifer then we are going to use this uh, solution okay then press okay and that's the the hydraulic conductivity in these units but we can add more things here for example uh, options i want to add this one the recommendation head range apply and it's over here that is the recommending one and then we want uh, the line pass with these two points over here that's an important thing and to modify that one i'm going to close this one okay that is the automatic solution from the software okay but you have you can make your own interpretation let's press press this option here to make your own interpretation then mark on the graph and select uh, where you want the, the line okay in this case maybe we can do something like that and we are not taking this point because that one is not important as you can see here that is 90 percent of the recovery of the groundwater at this point okay this one is 80 70 60 50 and edc because it's uh, logarithmic right but the most important part is this part of the recovery because until here we have 90 percent of the recovery right and here if you check this point over here that is uh, this one here and we are taking measurements every 100 minutes right and between this this measurement and this one i'm pretty sure that the uh, stabilized level it was between these two numbers okay because as you can see the difference between these these two is just uh three uh, 30 uh, millimeters okay and from this one is not that much okay and i believe that the the water uh, stabilized level it was achieved between these two me measurements then this point it's uh, it's representative but it's not going to give you uh, too much information okay and the these two the next one and it is zero you cannot see these values here because it goes until 0 0.001 and you cannot see these values over here okay but the rec recommended uh, range for the software is from here to here okay and that's what we did even you can change a little bit to be more accurate if you want just keep trying okay something like that something like that maybe then that one is the the hydraulic conductivity that we get in uh, centimeters by second and if we check at the table we are going to see in this table that is uh, the range that we get here for seal okay the value is more close to this one it's a really high value of hydraulic conductivity for our seal materials but that we have some sun here maybe there is also some sun over here right that provides high hydraulic conductivity in this kind of silt also in this case you have to be aware that when you are doing the excavation and you are taking the soils from here and you put here on the toil on the top of the ground uh, could be some filtrations of the of the water right and recharge the aquifer but if that happens you are going to see something we are on this curve over here but this curve looks uh, very natural and looks there is no recharge okay then if you go here to file print you can see a summarize of all the information okay that's the saturated thickness of the aquifer 
that's the relation between the hydraulic conductivity at the horizontal and also at the vertical this one is the initial displacement this is the total penetration of the well this one is the radius that we assume for the for the casing for the pipe and also for the for the drill this one is the length of the screen and this one is the static water column here you have the result for the hydraulic conductivity and also this parameter okay and if you close here and you go you can play to see more information over here you have some things you can create a report and you can see other things related with this uh, kind of test but we are not cover that information in this video okay thank you very much for watching and hopefully it helps people to understand a little bit how it works the slack test in a test pit it's as i said it's not really normal but maybe it can save you if you are working at the field and you uh, identify groundwater and you don't have any well to to calculate the hydraulic conductivity you can do something like that to have a quantitative value that is going to be better than have a qualitative value okay thank you very much and see you on the next one